Hi and welcome back to a new video. As you can see on my table, we have here the Asus RTX 3070 in the Noctua edition, also OC edition, which I want to add. And uh, obviously I would just like to like tear this apart and see how the cooler is designed and everything. But before we can get to that, we will first do the testing, simply because taking apart could have a negative impact on thermals, especially on the thermal paste and the thermal pads. That's why we will start simply with our testing first. Okay, let's take a quick look first. It is a simple card, but that's what I really appreciate about this design. And I know that a lot of people will criticize the, if I translate this correctly, it should be like nut wedges. You know what I'm talking about. This very specific like brownish design. Um, I mean, that's the typical Noctua design, but what I like about this card is that it's simply performance focused. It's focused on having very good thermals, very low noise, and at the same time, neglect everything that could be useless, such as RGB. And yeah, it's also quite thick card quad slot design, which I think is okay. I mean, not everybody utilizes all of the expansion slots. I mean, like dual GPU is something you would not do anyway on a 3070, right? Doesn't even support it. So that wouldn't even make sense. I guess it's absolutely fine to utilize four slots and just focus purely on performance, like temperature, noise level, everything. We can talk about design later, but I like it. I like the approach. And the Noctua A12 fans are just absolutely nice. Let's plug it in and see how it goes. This thing is just thick, massive, damn. Yeah. As you can see, Windows Idle, semi-passive. At this point, it, it just basically becomes impossible for me to measure the noise level of this thing. Simply because everything around, like the ambient noise in my room, just if a random car outside passes my house, it's louder than this. From a distance, from like, I'm literally like 50 centimeters away right now. I cannot hear anything. It's impossible to hear. This should be the best air cooler I've ever tested. From what I can see right now, the clocks are between 18, like 30, 1870. That is also the expected range for a 3070. GPU temperature is very low. It's just above 60 degrees Celsius with a hotspot at 72 degrees Celsius while maintaining a fan speed of 900 RPM. That's also the reason why we we just cannot hear anything. Power draw is 240, roughly 230 watt of the card. It's also as expected from a 3070 non-TI. There's actually a lot of headroom, I think. So if you would allow the card to have a higher GPU temperature target, maybe like 70 degrees Celsius, 75, and neglect another like 30 megahertz on the GPU clocks, then you would maybe be able to run like 800 RPM. But since you cannot hear it already, probably doesn't make much sense anyway. Now running some gaming tests and even this condition, it's remnant from the ashes in 1440p. Still cannot hear anything of the fans, but... I'm not sure if you're able to hear this, if I just point my microphone at it, but I can definitely hear some coil whine on the card, simply because everything is so quiet that you can definitely hear the coil whine. Reason for the coil wine is obviously the setup configuration, also the title we're running and also the frame rate we're running. But you can see there was just a frame rate drop to like 100, 110 FPS. While if we just enter this area back here, we are entering the region of around 200 FPS. But that's also the region I would try to hit. If you have like a 144 Hertz or 165 Hertz monitor, then it's definitely something you would try to achieve frame rate wise. So I guess that's kind of like a realistic scenario and you would have or you could hear coil wine in this scenario at least over test bench. Could be less if you're putting this inside a closed case or it will be less inside a closed case. But looking at the GPU stats, 60 degrees, 61 degrees Celsius on the core while maintaining less than 900 RPM on the fence. That's just impressive. I guess the card passed any kind of testing scenario, like absolutely brilliant. Temperatures are great, noise level is unbeatable. Simply, we can just look at uh, 3070 Ti comparison values. I don't have like 3070 values here right now, but I guess just to get an idea how big the noise difference is, we can just look at this data. All the 3070 Ti cards I had here were in the region of about 50 dBA, which is almost three times as loud as this card, because considering the room I'm in, because it's not like noise dampered or anything, this card could be in the region of like 30 dBA and comparing this with like 50 dBAs, that's like three times louder. 
Um, by the way, the data was uh, taken 30 centimeters away from the center of the card. That's always how I measure the cards. But like generally speaking, just looking at like raw data from noise and thermals, it's absolutely great. We will now proceed, open the card, check cooler assembly, thermal pads and everything. Just talking about the PCB itself, that should be a 3070 dual card. The backplate at least is definitely different, at least from the print on it. I guess the, like the physical shape should be the same as on the dual, but the print on it is different with the Asus and the Noctua logo next to it. There's also the P and Q mode, performance and quiet. I tested the card in the Q mode, in the quiet mode, because I guess that's one of the major reasons why you're getting this card, because you want to have a very quiet 3070. And then I'm not sure if I would use the performance mode. You can also take off the entire fan shroud just have to remove two screws from the left and two screws from the right, like on the back plate and on the front shield right here. Then you can remove the entire fan bracket, which holds the two 120 millimeter AF12 uh, fans. And also it's not that easy to remove because there are double-sided adhesive strip tapes right here, like on this fan and this fan, it's taped to the center of the cooling block a little bit, uh, which also led to the removal of this like fan sticker, which is not really an issue. So that, that's possible if you wanted to do that, but you can also just remove the entire cooling block completely, like the heatsink itself with the fans stuck to it. Talking about the card itself, PCB, this is like 100% identical to the 3070 Dual or 3070 Tough Gaming. It's completely identical. Also in case you have to swap the thermal pads for whatever reason I measured them, they are two millimeter thick. So maybe if you remove the cooler and you tear them apart, it could be that you have to replace them, then you should get two millimeter thermal pads as replacement. And that's also something Asus could still optimize. They could still work on tighter tolerances for the cooler, which would allow to use 1.5 millimeter or one millimeter thick thermal pad, which should lead in better thermals for the memory ICs and also for our VRMs. By the way, that's also a kind of interesting coincidence because I've been working on a Noctua edition as well, but on a 5700 XT. This video will be online next week. So yeah, stay tuned about that. And one last thing I have to criticize, actually I have to pull out the ACES presentation for this. So they always send like uh, review guides where they have additional information. And there is one part where they specifically talk about the heatsink. And in this part, they're saying ACES and Noctua engineers ran extensive simulations to optimize heat pipe placement and fin density to take full advantage of the airflow characteristics. Not so sure about that point, to be honest, because I compared this to images I could find online from the 3070 Tough Gaming, and to me, this cooler looks 98% identical. The only difference I could spot is that this, no, actually this part right here, um, is like two millimeter higher. So they, I don't know if they increased just the size of the, of the cooler, like by two or three millimeters on, the, on this position. But that's the only difference I could spot. I even counted the fins, like the amount of fins on here to check if they maybe change the fin density by, I don't know, 10, 20%. If you do this kind of adjustment, then you should definitely see it in like size and also the amount of fins. But also the heat pipe placement, just looking through the cooler is 100% identical. I'm not sure what kind of like extensive simulations these engineers had to run or I'm missing something. Noctua, maybe let me know in that case, but from what I can judge, this is basically a 3070 Tough Gaming with a very, very good cooler choice because those fans are awesome. That's something we knew upfront, right? I mean, those fans are famous for being probably some of the best you can get on the market. Not sure about the color choice. That's something you can definitely debate because, I mean, I personally like it. That's something I can, I can tell because if you just go for a very silent and performance focused system, that's definitely a great choice because it will perform. It will definitely perform. But it's hard to pair it with different components. I mean, I already switched to the Noctua Chromax uh, CPU cooler because it looks just much nicer. And I guess if they switched this design also to like a Chromax version with like black fans or whatever, there would be a lot more potential buyers for this card than using the, yeah, the brownish nut wedge design. Sorry about that. All right. So, I mean, just technically speaking, it's a great card. MSRP from what Asus told me is uh, 830 for the, uh, for the OC edition. 
but I'm not sure how like important or valuable this information is because the price will definitely differ once it's hitting the store. But just looking at the MSRP, in theory, it could be a good price. You will definitely get a good noise performance temperature levels for this. Not sure about the cooler marketing part, but apart from that, it's a great card. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.